Hello everyone, May the 19th. Something has definitely changed, big time, something I was hoping for for many, many months. And finally we are there. And I will try to quantify it, show you what it is, what I'm seeing happening. It is that, I mentioned it earlier, many people have been sitting on the fence, they had their jaw drops, they were not really able to comprehend yet what had been happening. Because it's so um, disconcerting, discomforting, really, really um, uh, worrying um, to see that things are not the way we have perceived them. Finally, people are finding their voices. They're coming back and are not just speaking out slightly, they are becoming warriors. That's exactly what is happening and this um, next week will be crucial, will be big, will be really, um, voices will get very, very loud. We will see that and you might be one of those who are really starting to get to to accumulate that courage to, to just um, speak up, speak out, share what you know, what you have personally experienced. That's all we need really, people sharing their personal stories. And this is the kind of center point of this coming week energetically, the exact full moon naturally. The sun and the moon are in exact opposition as seen from Earth. The moon is perfectly behind Earth, you could say. And I want to just show you two charts here to start with. This is the full moon, as I said, 23rd. And this is the one chart which I want to bring to your attention. This is when Hygeia, the asteroid of health, well-being, representing all these uh, wonderful things of coming in tune, being in synchronicity, at the right moment, at the right time, all of that, that asteroid was perfectly aligned with the evolutionary direction we are on in mid-Aries, in the 16th degree of Aries, very potent degree to start with. That was right on the heels of that big event, that solar storm. Here you have the timeline. So this was um, 2.38 a.m early morning on the 12th that was uh, you see here this is the this is um this is let me get that exact this is zero hours the 12th you see so that was somewhere in th this area and this event was at the tail end kind of bringing the whole energetic outrage and and crazy spell to a full close to a to a place of integration this is um what all these many flares really were building up towards and as you know we had about um, 15 x flares in this short window of the first two weeks of may which I was seeing coming and that this would be a, a really intense phase and it's not over yet, it's really st just getting into the next stage now. In the stage where things are truly coming into uh, the, um, the greater uh, panoramic view of what is going on, many many new voices. Just one of them I want to share with you which is one I'm following. Um, ir irregularly is Dr. Campbell, Dr. Jose John Campbell. You can find him on YouTube. He has been regularly updating on the whole um, COVID story from early on. He has gone through the whole transformation himself early on. You might know he has been promoting all what was um, pro um, what was recommended and he then have find, found out himself in a very, um, went through a really difficult time with all of that and since has been <clears throat> bringing to light all the stories and 
research papers. So in this latest video, he is um, um, bringing Brian Dressen into his um, broad broad podcast who I mean you have to listen to it this is an amazing story this lady again was fully um, believing and um, what was uh, going on and actually um, was at the front line of doing the right thing so to say and now she's really um, I mean, she, she has uh, all these injuries and um, went through very, very difficult times and now has become a, a real warrior. Just one voice of many. Russell Brand is another one I would like to mention. He just lately was, um, a few weeks, I guess, a couple of weeks, he was actually um, featuring um, uh, Andrew Como, I guess is his full name, one of the CNN presenters who also has now come out as a as a as an um, um, someone who is suffering from after effects of that treatment. So there's many many people who really are now changing their whole approach to what they have uh, experienced and start to speak up now yes this this is just one of the many voices I, I will share these links underneath so you can definitely uh, in the description I mean under the video always find information there which is what I'm talking about to do some further research and reading and watching so anyway this is kind of very indicative so let me just go back to the similarity of these two charts what is that really saying so in both these charts the upcoming full moon and this alignment of Hygieia with the lunar node we see exactly the same geometry, just 180 degrees the other way around. As you see here, we have the last degree of Virgo in the full moon and here the last degree of Pisces. So it's a complementary um, energy. It's, it complements each other. The full moon, so to say, then really brings this um, Hygieia lunar node conjunction into the full limelight. The very special thing about these two charts is it's the major axis is the ascendant, uh, descendant, the horizon, so to say, where the energy is expressing outwardly is in the last minutes of the multiple signs and so is the vertical axis of power in the last minutes of mutable signs so it's the mutable cross is exact it's in the very final minutes of the sign so it's a it's a a crash and we are in the final stages of um coming to a clear picture here kind of the summit of all the experiences the energies which have been building up through these um, 30 degrees of these four signs of change of integration of coming to a place of a new beginning yes we are still in the very last minutes in a way of finishing the story putting the last final touches on it neptune both times is super pronounced here at the ascendant and naturally here at the descendant Neptune has shifted gears as you know on April the 10th as I mentioned in the earlier recordings it has crossed the 2815 line first time in Pisces which made Neptune enter a whole new um, segment of the zodiac which is assigned to hexagram 25 which is innocence or love of spirit it is that forward-looking very upbeat positive 
frequency of going in new directions towards the equinox point in that sense into new land and it's just preparing itself to really launch which will, which will happen next year not before actually Neptune will turn retrograde at 29.55 just five minutes shy of entering Aries the new sign the new real beginning so 2025 will be the year when this energy which is now building up fully comes to a recognition so to say right now it's still kind of a little bit under the cover getting ready but Neptune in this position is super powerful it illustrates that intuition sensing what is going on um, we don't really have to um, be to um, how shall I say that it, it, yeah I mean ev everybody is getting the feeling of what is going on right now and I guess that's the best way to say it it's in the air and whoever is having the courage now to speak up and, and share and be more vocal is received because everybody knows at this point it's no secret anymore that there is a an agenda that there are people who are in power who are not in our favor who are not really wanting the best for us who are having a very very dark agenda really and that is all really coming out into the open so let me show you through a few more charts actually just before i get too deep in it let me just refer to the solar flares once more as i keep watching those so this is the latest big one and let me just quickly pull that up and um, that is here yes here you see it mm, it's not here no not here we go so that was the 7.3 flare we just had two days ago now this let me say it that way whenever big solar flares happen seems and appears strongly to coincide to synchronize with big important astrological alignments as we has as we have seen starting pretty much at new year's eve on the 31st of december 2023 it was really a trademark of this year that started on really um, uh, right at the beginning every time something big is in the tube uh, a, a big change of a shift of energy there is a big solar event happening and that really um, shows you also the importance of what we just went through these first two weeks of May which built up to that Hygeia North Node conjunction which really opens us into a whole new direction of working towards more health more wonderful integration and serendipity on all fronts that is the direction we're heading to so what was the event around this flare of the 18th short before the 18th around actually 9 p.m so let's have a peek that was the heliocentric mars saturn conjunction started it and that was a really big event energetically as this set the pace for a much more um i would say momentous and wanting to do the right thing approach 
Mars and Saturn when they're together this is discipline this is strategy this is that very strong sense of doing the right thing being in charge in Pisces in the 13th degree which is all about willpower and I want to read it once more out of the Sabian symbols I have um, this is the book for those of you who are new here the 13th degree of Pisces is the one power in man which is an assurance of victory in the contest generated by social processes in which he has become an active part so this really stepping into this power of doing the right thing and of not giving in holding strong it is endurance and intensity this is a military energy you could also say of dedication of service of doing the right thing regardless um, being ready to even go through difficult stretches that Mars Saturn conjunction definitely um, was um, kind of at the tail end of all that uh, shift um, starting us into a whole new window of time which we are just starting to get a real grip on interesting also was that Mercury at the time just had entered Aquarius here coming out of a Pluto conjunction which Mercury Pluto is always mind opening and taking in the ability to see different perspectives widening our mental framework Ceres here powerfully placed Ceres the earth goddess which is super important these um, uh, um, present times too as most of the asteroids are Pallas was in opposition to Jupiter and actually you see just uh, actually today Earth here in heliocentric view has been aligning exactly with Pallas and this brings me back to this picture here that happened actually right here in between hmm? so we have two flares 144 p.m. this one here and the second one 565 p.m. and the um, earth palace alignment was at 3 p.m. right here in between so again this illustrates that this is an important alignment palace is the asteroid of understanding patterns of analyzing data being able to really see and and comprehend what interpret what has been going on in that sense yes palace also is related to art which is an interpretation of reality in that sense too so it is kind of taking the essence of our our um, perceptions and evolving them into a into a a, 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 an overview understanding integrating the different fractals picture uh, pixels into one comprehensive understanding of reality that is what is strongly happening as we speak these days and palace actually will change signs in heliocentric very soon we'll get to that this is just coming up i guess tomorrow so anyway it's it was may 17 actually also was in the man calendar a very super important day it was the first day of the green central castle those of you who are new in the man calendar it's a 260 day pattern template which repeats over and over and it is grouped into five times 52 days 
The first four segments are the four directions, east, north, west, south. And then the fifth is very special. This is the only system where you have the number five really showing itself. Usually four is a structural number. After four, we start over. Not so in the man calendar. The fifth is the integrative part, which is all about, as it says, the green center of castle, bringing everything to the center back into alignment. And it is all about renewal, planting the seeds for something that is yet to come to fully show itself. So these 52 days, which started on the 17th of May, are all about that, that integration and growing the roots really for something to truly um, manifest as soon as we are en entering the next eastern castle again you can calculate 52 days ahead from here and there's always the link underneath again where you can do the conversion of regular dates into mind calendar it's really a wonderful system i find uh, much more simple than astrology in many ways gives you the basic energy of the what's going on every day so anyway we started off on that 17th of may with that mars saturn conjunction this is the geocentric picture of that interesting was this happened around the time when the moon was farthest from earth which is a super important point in the moon's monthly orbit it is you could uh, uh, imagine it the moon is going away from earth even farther and farther into space and then comes the point where it where it reaches its its highest kind of if you throw a ball into the air that is where the ball stands still to then come back closer to earth so it's a super important moment of redefining the moon's energy which is valid for a full month and that actually happened just an, um, a couple hours after this this um, heliocentric Mars-Saturn conjunction, which we see 2.39 p.m. And the moon was closest at 7.01 p.m. here at 22.56 at the time. Interesting that the flare happened around that same time, just a little later. Again, just reinforcing, making it clear this is an important turning point we are at. Juno here at the helm of the chart, right in center for the zero meridian. Juno, all about working together, teaming up, closing shoulders, being aware that unless we really work together find unity we will not be uh, strong enough to build something important and new and lasting so this is the energy and juno is in a very very good placement right now actually <laughs> it so happens that this degree the 10th degree of virgo have been mentioning that in earlier recordings is the is where the sun was in Juno's discovery chart. So when Juno was discovered in the early 1800s, that was the degree the sun was in. So yes, Juno is definitely strongly featured right now. I guess it's easily, um, you, can, you can feel it, it's in the air. It is um, important, super important to stand together and overcome little differences in ways of seeing uh, the world these are unimportant details we have really to 
come back and appreciate each other regardless of um, these small differences. Now, to see just one day later, and again this shows how astrology works, we have the Sun-Jupiter conjunction almost with the same geometry. Again, highlighting Juno as Scorpio rising, yes this is all about change and um, intensity, that is what Scorpio is all about. So that was the moment when the Sun and Jupiter were exactly aligned just yesterday actually, it's very very much still in this energy as you see the Sun at present is at 29.19 Jupiter is just one degree behind now, so the Sun is actually between Jupiter and Setna as we speak. This is an intensity we can also feel that Setna energy, I made a very um, recently a longer video on Setna, please go back to that. Setna is super important in our present times, has just entered Gemini for good for 41 years. Setna, which comes back from an 11,400 year orbit around the Sun, is expressing through Gemini for the next 41 years. Setna, who is considered to be mute to start with, because she is the goddess from the deep sea. She's becoming vocal, she's getting her voice back, she's expressive, bring all the secrets uh, which she has in her vaults up to the surface. And Pluto in a beautiful 120 degree aspect here and this is an aspect which is exact for multiple years has been actually already for the last I would say about five even ten years and and is most exact around these present years between 22 and 26 I guess and then slowly getting out of orb again but saying Pluto and Setna together are really the trademarks of that big change which we are going through. At least it's one big aspect of it. They work as a team. Pluto is kind of the one which takes old structures down, shows they are obsolete, they're no more working, we need new things, new ideas that Aquarian energy is very strong these days and it really gains momentum and Setna is the one which doubles down and says yes we have to as we as all these new facts these new which is, is not really new it's just is something which has been there all the time is now coming into the light of day and we have to take it in account, we can't negate it and ignore it any longer. So this is um, all amplified and with the Sun entering Gemini just a day from now, yes it will, we are definitely in, 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 a new, in a new scene, in a new chapter of reality as we speak. Okay, <laughs> and it's not over. You see, there's much more going on. It's really a very dense time again, much, much happening. And I'm trying to just show you the most important of these alignments. This is when tomorrow, Monday, Mars will be exactly in the North Node, which already we have been feeling this energy building up and that moment when an aspect is exact that really nails it down into its exact expression 
Mars and North Node very similar to the Mars Saturn energy of being extremely dedicated and focused and disciplined. Mars is the ruler of Aries, as you know, Mars is in its home sign. The North Node in Aries is all about going in a new direction, doing something which hasn't been here yet, bringing in a whole new frequency, that energy of spring, of new beginnings. There's lots of um, zest and chuspa, I guess is a, a, a really nice word, uh, eagerness to do the right thing and to be proactive all of that and interesting in that moment um, the moon is in opposition to Chiron and actually if we look here at the whole alignment you see that within a few degrees node Mars then um, here is Hygieia and then there is um, Chiron so all in a grand conjunction actually the Mars is approaching Hygieia and Chiron so it's all still building up really this energy getting more um, pronounced so if we look at the whole um, group of planets here it is that strong eagerness towards healing health, unraveling all the, the problematic issues, looking at what has been going wrong and what needs to be corrected, Chiron. Hmm? And Chiron, as I say, in opposition to m the Moon in Libra and in a T-square to Juno, um, sorry, to um, Ceres, the Earth Goddess who has just been going into a retrograde mode on the 15th of May actually starting to work her way back inward into the to the essence of what really needs to be looked at. Ceres, as you know, um, the Earth Goddess, um, which is that tough love at times, which needs to put its foot down and say here and not farther, because it is in your um, in your interest, as a good mother does with her kids. This is kind of the energy, and then uh, we nature is stepping in. Really, that is nature speaking, and um, with Pluto here both at the midheaven in that grand trine with Uranus and Venus and Jupiter at the ascendant Venus actually most exact and the black moon again the shadow point which is so important these days it is what has to be brought into full light of day and the hexagram, the I Ching oracle, which rules this part of the zodiac is number six, conflict. And conflict is necessary. It is really the friction, which is at the root of progress, the friction of exposing what is not good and speaking up and confronting what needs to be confronted so this is naturally also on a very individual and personal level it is the time to confront the shadows and look at them very closely and overall it is a process which goes extremely easy and fast these days and 
at the root of the process is love and expansion and beauty and the the promise of something totally new coming into this dimension so the next chart I want to put some light on actually is then the Gemini ingress of the Sun happening tomorrow Monday at 1 p.m. universal time here you see it zero 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 and um, really closely conjunct Setna so that whole next month will have that basic frequency of bring something to the surface from the deep mm -hmm. from something which has been slumbering and sleeping and and getting ready for thousands of years is really starting to bubble up and getting into the consciousness the collective consciousness and it is a difficult process you see it's Saturn here is at the seventh house cusp together with Nessus so it is allowing to um, to go through some grief difficulty embracing um, that challenge Saturn here yes it is not not that easy but it is a necessary process to go through and with Jupiter here nourishing the Sun our personal expression this is actually quite easy to do once we are in the right spirit which is all about um, that heart sense of knowing it's the right thing to do it's uh, what will align us more deeply with nature with why we are here for what is the reason we came in the first place to be born in this crazy time of change of new beginnings of taking down thousands of years of corruption that is all in the cards here now and then, um, as I mentioned, palace already earlier, as you remember today, just hours ago, there was the exact conjunction palace had with Earth in the heliocentric picture. So now on the 23rd, that is just actually short before new moon. Mm -hmm. Here you see the geocentric picture actually it's short after okay the moon is at 550 here so it is short after full moon that palace again that is the ability to see patterns and to um, come to a more abstract understanding integrate the different segments of perception into one integral picture palace entering Sagittarius this is an important shift of our focus now this happens as you see with palace being here in opposition to Sedna conjunct the earth still so this is um, a very important change and in Scorpio that was kind of digging deep for facts versus Sag now will be much more outgoing and proactive pushing hard in the in the right direction Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius naturally which is all about expansion and the that inner fire to um, be seen and go the whole way to the end of the of that journey it's a big journey usually 
Sagittarius is on hmm, always going uh, pushing a bit further than what is humanly possible into new land a fire sign again yes it is enthusiasm is the leading energy behind why I also bring up this chart is because it is um, right in the horizon hmm? and even more so if we look at this same moment in the geocentric picture you see then palace here still in Scorpio for a few more months actually <laughs> as that's the funny thing about uh, heliocentric and geocentric astrology because from Earth's point of view you see Pallas is now going backwards again even deeper into back into Scorpio so it is both these energies are present but as Pallas shifted back into um, goes forward into Sagittarius and heliocentric is is right at the ascendant here in the global chart and I also want to bring um, focus on this for a second that 23rd degree of Virgo you see that is there that last big flare showed the moon and where also the moon was when it was far farthest away from earth which was um 22 um 26 i guess something like that let me go back to it that is where it was 22 26 you see that is that push off point towards a whole new expression of lunar energies through the next four weeks and um, I just want to keep share two more charts here a little bit farther into the future that is then when Jupiter enters Gemini on the 25th we might come back to that chart or not we will see but again um, Ceres super pronounced at the ascendant now Jupiter will be in Gemini for the whole next year more or less Jupiter is about for one year in each sign about 12 years it takes for a full round so this will be a big shift and uh, definitely reinforcing what we said before about the whole um, Sedna energy coming full into light Jupiter is always magnifying what it is in touch with Uranus here at the root of the chart yes bringing this brick trine again into focus Ceres Uranus and the black moon which is all about fundamental seismic shifts and this naturally can mean real seismic uh, events um, but also within each of our own psyche seismic shifts are happening these days readjustments big readjustments big realignments to a reality which we are just starting to see in its fullness as what it is and more and more people naturally are able to as I said earlier start talking about it being open with their experiences and then um, last but not least I have here that final chart on the 26th next Sunday a week from now when heliocentric Juno will enter Libra this will then shift yet in another big way the energy you see then we have that beautiful big trine complete Setna Juno and Pluto what I said earlier about Juno uh, about Sedna and Pluto as being kind of the the deepest notes in this big shift we are in collectively globally um, 
through this whole decade, I would say, which started around 2020 and will definitely lead us into the early 2030s of shifting into a whole new direction. With Juno here, yes, this is big. This is, um, this is another sign of that big shift we are presently undergoing. Mars and Saturn here at the helm with Mercury. This is a ser serious business we are we are in. Hmm? It's and it's all about getting things done. Mars and Saturn here at the helm of the chart again linking up to that Mars Saturn conjunction energy which started on the seventeenth, which really began a whole new multi-year cycle, I guess it's about three years for the two to catch up with each other again. So overall you see, I mean also the Venus Jupiter conjunction at the time is very um, auspicious here with Setna in actually part of this big trine. I should really integrate them, mention them too. Venus, Jupiter is the two most beneficial energies in the zodiac, so to say. It's love and expansion. It is that appreciation of beauty and of generosity. Yes, we are getting into better places. Absolutely. We are coming out of the dark. It is no more a question. It is happening and it naturally goes organically. It won't be um, uh, traveling on a superhighway. It will steadily build up as it has over the last four years. Just look back how far we've come. Hmm? Anyway. I leave it at that. Thanks again for joining, listening, and um, if you like to share what you heard here, please do so and um, subscribe. And if you really like my work, my approach, please consider um, contributing um, something. There's Patreon and um, and PayPal links underneath the video too. So it is what keeps me going. As you know, I also have to earn a living, so I won't be present so much in the next few weeks. I have to start thinking of making money too. Anyway, but any little support is welcome and will help me to stay on here and I'm motivated to um, continue what I'm doing. Thank you for being here. I love you all. Bye-bye.